This week on Kentucky Afield, deer season is finally here, and there are some changes that you need to know about. But don't worry, we've got you taken care of. Then, they're called the ribeye of the sky. Find out everything you need to know about hunting sandhill cranes. It's all next on Kentucky Afield. Yeah, we got one, sweet. Got a muskrat? Yeah. Good job. <laughs> What do you know about that, man? That's a good fish, man. Nice male, small mouth. Healthy, pretty color. Cody, here. Find us one more good fish, Cody. As biologists, we, we catch ducks and we place bands on them and it's just a really excellent place to see cottonmouths. What do you think? Like bull. That was pretty fun. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. Finally, September 1st has arrived and archery deer season is in, but there are some changes this year. To learn more, let's catch up with deer program coordinator, Gabe Jenkins. So we're here today, right on the doorstep of our archery deer season opening up, and I'm here with Gabe Jenkins, deer and elk program coordinator here for the Department of Fish and Wildlife. And Gabe, there's been some changes this year. Right, we've had a lot of changes, a lot to talk about really. You know, and there are actually two hunting guides out there this mm -hmm. year, one of which was printed and, and delivered, and then there were some updates that have been made, and there will be a second hunting guide out there that has update in a big band across the corner of it, so it should be pretty easy to recognize. Let's talk a little bit about some of the changes, because there's still four zones, mm -hmm. and there have been quite a few counties that have actually changed zones, correct? Correct. Yeah, so if you're a deer hunter in this state, we've effectively changed something for you, no matter if you hunt in zone one, zone four, west, east, south, Kentucky, if you hunt Kentucky and you hunt deer, there's something that's different for you. So it's very important that our hunters look at this new hunting guide, get online, get on the deer page and look at that because we've effectively changed a lot. Let's talk a little bit about the, the changes and the changes that went in place. First off, if you buy a statewide permit or a youth tag or a disabled senior license, mm -hmm. your tag now has four deer tags on it, correct? Correct. It doesn't matter what part of the state you live in, if you go buy a license, it's got four tags. Now, where you can use those tags, that's where it varies. Correct. So, yes, four tags. Traditionally, it was two tags for your senior and disabled, and for your statewide, the youth, it was just one. That's all gone to four. But where you use those four, it depends on what zone you hunt. Mm -hmm. So Now, we've got to be very cautious when we say you got four tags. It's still one buck, and that's what makes buck hunting and deer hunting such such a great experience here in the state of Kentucky is that we are getting an older class of bucks and we're getting really nice bucks here in the state of Kentucky. Absolutely, and, and, and our hunters have come to expect that, they want that, and we agree with that, mm -hmm. that policy is it's one buck, whether it's a spike or the biggest deer you've ever seen in your life, it's one. And we do a great job of managing that. We're actually seeing an increase or a decrease in the number of yearling bucks, mm -hmm. meaning that hunters are recognizing those, passing them, letting them mature to two or to three, and harvesting more mature deer. That's great. And even in zone one county where we go, there's too many deer. Deer need to be taken out. Removing the bucks is not gonna fix that issue. No, not and at all. With allowing people to take unlimited does, or at least four on a tag, and you can go buy additional tags for two additional deer, by doing that, by only taking one buck, our ratio is still pretty close to 50-50 when it comes to take at the end of the year, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Well, when, you, when you combine and look at it like we do on the antler of the stake, it's close to 50-50 every year. Let's get back to these zone changes again. So zone one, zone one, tell me about what zone one, what it all consists of. Right, so zone one to us as the managers is we want to see that population be reduced. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not intuitive. When you think one, that's the best. Not really, it's actually the worst. <laughs> we want to bring that population down. It's socially and or biologically out of control. It's not the where we want it. We want to bring it down to that two or that three level. And when you look at large deer that we get records of, we're talking Boone and Crockett, Pope and Young style deer, zone ones, proportionate to how many deer are taken from those counties, don't have the same number of trophy animals, do they? No, no, I mean, when you look at the number of deer harvested compared to the number of Boone and Crockett deer, 
your zones two and zone threes are really where your most potential is to shoot a big deer. And it's because of the health. It's balanced. It's, it's a healthy, very strong population that's not out of control. Back to zone one. So a hunter who, go, who hunts the zone one county, when he buys his license, like everyone else in every other zone, they have four deer tags, one antler deer. How many does can be taken in zone one? Zone one, it's no change. It's still unlimited antler list deer as long as you possess those permits. So okay. you get those four deer on your statewide. If you harvest four antler list deer, you can go buy your additional deer permit for $15 that gets you two deer still. Mm -hmm. You could shoot two antler list deer there, um, or you could shoot an antler deer and an antler list deer and, and move that on up through. So you can keep buying that antler deer or additional deer permit um, and keep shooting if you want to. And like the changes were made a couple years ago, if you want to go out and take four antlerless deer, when you buy your bonus permit, you can now make that one of those your buck tag. You still allow one, but you can go out and take your four does. Mm -hmm. And when you buy your bonus tag, it's no longer a bonus antlerless. Right. You can use that for your buck tag. It's just an additional deer permit mm -hmm. that gives you two deer. Zone two. Zone two, no change. We didn't affect it anything. The only changes in zone two are really the counties that went from a three to a two. So we and really when you buy your initial license, you have four tags. Four tags. But that's, other than the, the take in the counties, there's no changes. Correct. One thing I wanted to point out too, Chad, was that we didn't increase the cost. So you're paying the same money, you're now getting a, more deer. Mm -hmm. Also for our hunters who purchased the license before all these updates came out, we're getting a lot of questions on, you know, I paid for this, it had two originally, did it change automatically? Yes. So if you bought your license back and you bought a sportsman's in April or, or May, and you know you only thought you were getting two, really now you've gotten four. You've gotten so it just four. automatically updates for you. Okay, now zone three. Tell me about zone three and how that has changed. So zone three, um, a couple different things. We increase the length of the modern gun season. So instead of 10 days, now it's 16 days. Mm -hmm. You've been traditionally allowed to harvest four deer, and that's still the, the case. You can shoot four. However, you can only shoot one antlerless deer with a gun. Okay. And then that can be during the any of the youth, the muzzleloader season, the 16-day modern gun season, but you're only getting one antlerless deer. So if you want to shoot more, you got to pick up a bow or crossbow and shoot more antlerless deer. In Zone 3 counties, last year their gun season was how long? 10 days. 10 days. This year it's going to be 16 days. Now the number of deer you're going to be able to take there with a firearm is actually... Reduced. Reduced. Mm -hmm. So it's more opportunity right? More opportunity More of time. More opportunity time. But you, you are still limiting how many deer are being taken from that county with a firearm. Correct. All right. Zone four. Most of zone four is where we had all the EHD outbreak and it was impacted pretty hard. So what we did is we actually reduced the overall bag limit from four deer to two. And of those two deer, you know, one antlered buck or one antlerless deer, you're only getting one doe. Mm -hmm. And uh, that doe can be shot during the archery, crossbow, any of the youth, and then the last three days of the late muzzleloader. So the 16 day gun season, it's, it's antlered only. It's antlered only. Mm -hmm. So for an individual that says, well, wait a minute, I live in a zone four county and everyone else got four deer tags and I only got two. Their tag is good for four. Their license and their deer tags are good for four. They just have to hunt outside of a zone four county. Right. They'd have to go somewhere else and hunt. And there are a lot of opportunities on WMAs and you know, there's a lot of a lot of places out there to hopefully get permission to hunt. They still have the opportunity to take four. They just gotta do it outside their county. And it's for their own county's deer population's sake, right? Right. And and we what we really want to do is get that population to rebound quickly and then get that county back to a zone three. We don't want there to be zone fours, just like we don't want zone ones. And so helping that population respond quickly, get it back up to where it's more socially acceptable, it's a win-win for all of us. So we're really hoping this will be a temporary thing and get a lot of counties that are in four up to a three. Consider donating to Hunters for the Hungry. Uh, that's something that I've done the last couple of years. I like to try to get out there early and get a deer and, uh, and donate that. So, well, listen, anything else about the season we need to know? Now, the biggest thing is we've changed a lot. So for our hunters, make sure you visit the website, look at the new hunting guide, familiarize yourself. That is the takeaway. It's per pretty late, but season's upon us. Look at it. You're good to go. For all those, again, who pick up that hunting guide, make sure that you look for the one that says updated, or you can find that on our website at fw.ky.gov and make sure it's got the yellow banner that says updated hunting guide. Thanks again, Gabe, and good luck, at, good, good luck this season. Thank you, you too, Chad. Sandhill crane hunting is something that is relatively new here in the state of Kentucky, but the overall population continues to increase. Here's your first look at my very first ever Sandhill crane hunt.
it never fails when you put your decoys out in the morning before it's light and you think you've done a really good job. Daybreak comes and they're too tight. I'll set my perimeter first. That way I know that I'm 60 yards from the blind, 70 yards from the blind. That gives me my outer limit. Then I fill in. It makes it appear bigger from the air, makes it appear that there's more. You get them munched in tight. You know, these birds up in the air, it looks like a really small group, may not be attractive to them. Yeah. Then sometimes I'll be out here and I'll end up pulling every one of them up and oh, covering really? up with grass and then hunting. You know, huh. if, if there's too much movement in them. Yeah. And you, know, you can't have too much movement, that'll flare them. Ooh, these have a light breeze. They're moving just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they'll move a little bit and you don't ever want them turning and facing the same direction because that's how they act when they see something that's threatening. Yeah. You know, if they see a coyote walking across the field, they're all going to turn and face that direction. Yeah. Well, from the air, that tells other birds, eh, something's wrong. And they're completely non-alarmed, just feeding, doing their thing. Yeah, and you always want more feeders than you do sentries, just like goose decoys. Yeah. All right, let's go move truck. All right, that sounds good. Well, that's our first group, and I hear another one coming. So it looks like we're set up just in time, huh? Yeah, they roost down on Barron River Lake. And about this time every morning, they'll pick up. And they usually come off in groups of 10 or 20 to areas that they know they're going to feed, you know, most likely areas they fed the day before. Now, when they go back to the roost from the field in the evening, they'll pick up in groups of 40 and 50. So here in Kentucky, when do we typically start seeing them, and how long will they be here? You'll typically start seeing them come through depending on the weather, the end of October all the way through into February. I witness sandhill cranes from a distance a lot, yeah. from a deer stand. I mean, that's the time of oh, year yeah. you really start seeing them and from a boat. Yeah. But to be this close to them, I'm really excited about this. Yeah, and it could happen in a minute or two or we could be here for a couple hours. It depends on how they fly. Well, it's beautiful out here and we're dressed for the cold. So whatever it takes, I'm fine with <laughs> <We're good>. it. <laughs> I'm gonna enjoy every minute of it. Yeah, no doubt. We've already seen our first group of birds. It could happen any time now. Right. The birds that we're going to be paying attention to are going to be coming from in front of us. Okay. Those are the ones that are going to give us some play right over the blind, and that's what we're after. There's several groups out right now making their way. There have been a few coming over on this right-hand side. It'd be nice if we could get some smaller groups to come through. Right. So once they come in, we got to make sure that they're in range and moving low, right? If they drop down to treetop level out there, they're going to be good. You see these on my side? Yeah. They're low enough if they come over. They're flaring a little bit. I don't know if it's our blind or the decoys, but they're coming in close. But right at the very end, they're starting to peel out a little bit to the right and left. There's a few right there. Here we go. There's about 15 in there. There's that group in front of us. They're coming over the trees like I want. They're a little bit lower than the last couple, so this may give us a chance here. I'm hearing birds all around us. Here, we got a single right here. Kill it. Here we go. Nice shot. Bird down. Yeah. Good job. First crane ever. <laughs> I love it. Oh, it was awesome. All right, so we need to sit down. Get ready. Yeah, get back down because they're liable to come in from anywhere again. I didn't even see that bird. That was great. <sighs> that is really <laughs> awesome. It's so exciting when those things come through like that. So many birds and all of a sudden they can come from anywhere. They can. They can I mean, you got thousands of birds coming from this way, but so many have made their way behind us and, and they you, kind of just circle and know, fly man. around. You don't know. You're expecting them to come from the front, but luckily you saw that one in the back. I hear some behind us right now. We got plenty more chances, it looks like. Yeah. Here they come, so I'm loaded up and ready to go again. The thing you gotta watch out for now is you have one more bird. Yeah. So you gotta be really careful. Shooting a single is great, but if these birds come in in 10 or 15s like they have been, you know, be careful on that next shot. I'm gonna make sure that they're not going that fast and I either take that first bird or that the very last, the last one. But there's more coming over the trees right now. They're coming in like I want them, but right at the end, they are starting to flare. I want to pull a few of these decoys and see if that doesn't help. All right. These birds here, they look good right now. This may be it right here. They're going to be a little higher than that last one, so you may have to lead this bird All right. just a little bit. All right. Get ready. They're going to do it.
there we go. I've tagged out. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. Your second sandhill crane. Hey, this could not have worked out any better. We got to see so <laughs> many birds. Had two birds fly right over us here. That worked out great. It did, and they're still flying all over. I mean, there, there's birds coming from every direction. And I tell you what, this was really exciting. I can't tell how much I appreciate you bringing me out here to do this. This was an absolute blast. Oh, I love it. I love sitting here watching as much as I do shooting them myself. And you have put us in a spot where those birds, you knew right where they were going to be and right where they were going to feed. And we just got right in the travel corridor, and man, we have seen some birds. we got to get out there now and tag your bird. Got to go out there and take a look <laughs> at what we got. So here we go. What a beautiful bird. And this one has what I would call little red on top. Right. An adult bird will have no feathers on its head and it'll be this red skin all the way to the back of its head. I'm gonna mark little or no red. Correct. It's gonna ask if it has a leg band. There's no existing bands on this bird, okay. so that's gonna be no. No. All right, the next process is when you apply, you get a band and this gets attached to the leg of the bird. To the leg. All right. But you'll need that number there, the All 2039. Right. 2039. Of course, I'll let you do the honor. All right. When you tag a crane, you come up here above this knuckle right here, and you'll want to wrap it twice, and then lock it in. There you go. Once it's locked, it's locked, right? Once it's locked, it's locked. You'll feel it click when you get it in there. So, Brett, an interesting thing on this Sandhill Crane hunting is that you put in for the lottery, and if you're drawn, you're actually sent a link to where you go and have to take a test that shows me exactly how these birds look in flight, how they look juvenile, and the reason that is, is for what? There's a concern that hunters will mistake a sandhill crane for a whipping crane or a great blue heron. So the test has questions to make sure that you can identify the difference. There's a lot of shoot, don't shoot questions. You may have a scenario where you can't tell what color a bird is. It's flying in, but you can't tell what color it is. But if you can't tell what color it is, you need to be careful and not shoot that bird because it could be a whooping crane. Being in law enforcement, I feel like having a sandhill crane season actually helps protect the whooping crane because now you're putting hunters in the field who are educated in what whooping cranes look like, the fact that they need protection. And there's never been an accidental shooting of a whooping crane in the state of Kentucky by a hunter, correct? No. Well, we're gonna get this bird picked up. The only thing I gotta make sure I do before I process this bird or before midnight, I have to telecheck and put my telecheck confirmation number on here. That's it. But we, at this point in time, we're, we're gonna go check our other bird out. Yeah, let's go get it. All right. Wow, look how there's no feathers and look how much red is on the head of this bird. Correct, that would be considered an adult. You'll see on an adult bird that you have a lot more tan in the wing. Just a beautiful bird. You know, it is just a stunningly beautiful bird. A lot of people don't know, but these are excellent to eat. Oh, they're great. The nickname for them is they call them ribeye of the sky. <laughs> it doesn't get much better at ribeyes. You can grill it, fry it, bake it, you can do whatever you want, but I like to take that breast and go ahead and cut it in strips and then soak those strips for a couple of days in salt water mm -hmm. and get some of that blood out and it makes for much better table fare. Yeah, and look, we've been outside the blind now for a good 30 minutes or so, and the birds are still flying in. And this would be a spot if you were gonna hunt tomorrow, you come right back here to have another opportunity. You could, you could come back to the same spot in a day or two. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm excited to get these things on a hot grill, I will tell you that. They're great. Sandhill crane hunting was something brand new to me. If it's something that interests you, Here's some additional information. So Dr. John Brunges, so you've been around here for quite a few years as the program coordinator for Migratory Birds, correct? I have been. So tell me a little bit about what you guys are doing with Sandhill Cranes. We uh, have had a hunting season now on Sandhill Cranes for seven years. We've been monitoring that population and the population's doing well. And so this year we took to the commission some opportunities to change the season up a little bit and give our hunters a little bit more opportunity. Registration opens up when? Open September 1st. How many people will we be drawing this year? Well, it's different than the past. We've always drawn 400. Mm -hmm. This year, our season will run December 2nd through the last Sunday in January. We have 1,300 plus available tags. And so we will go through every single person that applies will get a tag. And so last year, 565 people applied. So all 565 would have gotten one tag. Mm -hmm. And then we would cycle back through in the order that you were drawn 
it would have meant that all 565 got two tags. Mm -hmm. And then there would have been about 200 so people that actually got a third tag as we went back through. So the order which you're drawn still can have an impact in that you might get a third tag if you are lucky. So if you put in, you're, you're successful in being drawn for a sandhill crane hunt, you really have to watch your mail because you're gonna receive a couple packages and there's pieces you have to take to the field with you. Right, and when you go to the field, you, you absolutely have to have that permit where you do your checking and you have to have those metal tags. This year, we're gonna have more time. We are not going to mail you your tag until you complete the test. Okay. Until you have a permit, you're not getting the metal tags. Okay. So you'll get, actually now get the permit in the mail, the metal tags, all that in one package so that you have it all, but don't wait till the first day of the season and go, oh, I need to go online and take my test because you won't have your tags to be able to hunt. And if you're someone who puts in for this every single year and you've taken that test, you're like, no, I've already taken that test. You have to take it every year. Still have to do it every year as a reminder to make sure people remember whooping cranes, there's a hundred birds in the Eastern population. Mm -hmm. And so shooting one is, is a big impact. And so we want to make sure that our hunters do the right thing and don't accidentally harvest one. And, and we've hunted sandhill cranes in Texas and other places for decades. And there's only one or two cases where birds there were shot. In Kentucky, we've never had a bird killed by a hunter. And we know people say, well, how, how do you know people just didn't hide it? Every, every whooping crane in the population has a transmitter on it. Mm -hmm. So when one dies, we know instantly. Mm -hmm. And so if it were to die somewhere where people were hunting, it, it would, we would instantly know, okay. and it hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. Migratory birds are different than everything else. Deer are the responsibility of the state of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Turkeys are the responsibility of the state of Kentucky, but migratory birds are managed based on an international treaty. U.S., Canada, Mexico, Russia, Japan, all entered into this treaty that says we will manage this resource together, and so we are federally mandated to do certain things to better understand these populations. And so with sandhill cranes, this population, we've made sure that through this research, and it's continuing today, that we know more about this population so that we don't get to a place where we're harvesting too many or mm -hmm. the population can't sustain what we're doing. So scientific management is what we do these days and we make sure we never go to a place where we're really negatively impacting a population. Well, I definitely appreciate the update on Sandhill Cranes, and after last season's hunt, I'll make sure I'm putting in again this year. I hope everybody does. I hope over time our goal is, as this population expands, to have more and more opportunity for people, more and more of different places where these birds are, as it is a spectacular hunt. To see those birds set up and lock in on your decoys and come to you and, and calling at you, you experienced it. It's special. There's not many things like it. It is fantastic. Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Here's Abel Fields holding a pretty bass caught in Louisville, Kentucky. Nice job. Here's a really nice sized bluegill caught by Audrey Scott, who's five years old. She caught this at Mill Dam in Dawson Springs. Congratulations. Here's a nice bull elk taken by Lowell Stevens of Goshen, Kentucky. He said it was a really rough season and he got it on the last day. Catherine Coffey started off right. This is her very first deer ever, a really impressive buck taken in Rock Castle County. Here we have Riley Combs and her dad showing off her very first sauger caught on the Kentucky River. Nice job. Matthew Strickland, who's 12 years old, caught this nice rock bass at Greenbow Lake. Nice job. Here's Jacob Pate with his very first turkey ever taken in Smithfield, Kentucky. Congratulations. Here's a really beautiful picture with a nice fish in it caught by Mary Alexa Howard. Caught this fish in Stanley, Kentucky. Congratulations. Joe Bazold had a really good day on Del Hall Lake as he took a nice smallmouth and a nice largemouth. Isaac Thacker is only five years old and he's already caught his first muskie on Cave Run Lake. Said he caught this fish all by himself. That is awesome. Do you have a hunting or a fishing photo that you'd like to share? Well, Kentucky Field is now accepting emailed photos of the ones that didn't get away. We will no longer accept photos sent through the mail. Email your photo to us at kyfield.ones at ky.gov. Make sure you tune in next Saturday night, September the 8th, for our annual Fall Hunting Call-In Show. This is the show where you ask questions about deer, elk, or any of our small game species. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege, 
always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water. Deer processing from the field to the freezer continues to be a runaway favorite for hunters everywhere. From ribs to roast, Sim Harp makes it look easy. Ordering information can be found at fw.ky.gov under the Kentucky Field tab.